So what's it like to ride a 72 volt aerial rider X-Class? <laughs> That's coming right up. Hey everyone, my name is Rick Cordero. Welcome to Run Playback, where we help you with video and tech tips to lead a more efficient and affordable lifestyle. Let's be creative and save money at the same time. Today we're gonna help our friend Hafsa mod her 48 volt Aerial Rider X-Class to 72 volts. We'll talk about the parts we used, take it out for a ride, and give our first impressions. So let's get to it. We are upgrading Hafsa's Aerial Rider X-Class and we're gonna do a complete overhaul of the bike. Turn it into a 72 volt beast. New motor. This is a 3000 watt E Street Bikes motor. You compare the size, <laughs> this motor is a beast. So this is a 72 volt battery. We, we kind of put it inside of a bag. Don't want to take it out again, but this comes with the E Street Bikes kit. We'll probably fit it into the frame over here-ish. Full twist throttle. Got the display here. Got a Sabaton controller, uh, 72 volt. Never actually programmed a Sabaton, so this will be interesting. This will be a new experience for me. We do have this piece of plywood, so we might uh, actually use this as our base platform for the controller. There's something solid for this thing to sit on. We got a new rear tail light, signal switch, horn, harness, step down converter. This start ignition. Not sure where we're gonna install this, but figure it out. So this is part of the E Street Bikes kit as well. There is some tutorials I think we're gonna check out, but it seems pretty straight forward. yourself. So this is a 72 volt 3000 watt QS motor kit. This is from E Street Bikes. You'll notice that it's a 20 by 4 inch tire. So this would actually fit um, a variety of electric bikes. Over here we have the 72 volt Sabaton controller. It's hidden inside of this bike bag right here. It's a little bit messy. We're probably going to fix this up a little bit, like clean up the wire harness and stuff. It does have Bluetooth connectivity. It also has a kind of a lighting system and an alarm system. Right here you have the ignition. It also comes with two sets of keys as well as a key fob to arm and disarm the bike. We'll turn the bike on in a minute, but the kit also comes with a TFT color display. It also comes with this control where you can change the power levels, access the menu button, power it on and off. And the kit comes with this lighting control. So you have the headlight switch here, you have the left and right signals, horn. At some point we're going to install front indicators as well and tie it into the rear indicator harness. For the front brake we installed these Maguras. We'll probably have to upgrade the rotor as well since the bike is more powerful and we need more stopping power. It does have a full twist throttle now, so that is uh, pretty cool. We also have this custom headlight. So this is a light bar that you could get on Amazon. We'll put a link in the description, but we think this looks a lot more sleek than the stock light. We also lowered the handlebars using some Surant parts. So there's more of aggressive stance, uh, like a cafe racer style. We added torque arms since there's more stress being put on the frame, one here and one on this side. And we also have this custom tail light, which has a brake function and left and right signals. Inside of this triangle bag, it's hard to see and I don't want to pull it all the way out. It's a 72 volt powerful lithium Molly cell battery pack and it's in a triangle. It has a 300 amp BMS as well as a QS8 connector that attaches to the Sabaton and an XT60 or the charger. What's interesting about this QS8 connector is that it's rated for 600 volts. It also can take 110 amps of constant current and 300 amps of peak current. Vincent. Now the kit install was pretty straightforward, but the one thing that we sort of stumbled upon was attaching the QS8 connector. So you'll notice when you connect it, you have to push it in pretty hard until it uh, seats fully. So when we did our bench test and we did full throttle, this connector was actually not seated all the way down. It was kind of halfway in. And that caused an arc on this side of the controller, which ended up heating up and melting uh, some of the plastic over here. It started to smoke and we kind of freaked out. Here we go, let's see how it goes. Power level one. <laughs> wait, wait started uh, 
smoking again. We cleaned the terminals and then we seated the connectors fully and everything worked perfectly. So just remember that these QS8 connectors are super, super powerful and there's a lot of amps being pushed through these connectors. And it's not like a XT60 or an XT90 where it's pretty clear when it's connected, it's kind of hard to have it loose. Since these are black connectors and it's kind of hard to see where, where it starts and begins, you want to make sure that you push it all the way in. Now the stock weight of the bike is about 80 pounds. So we didn't weigh it on a scale or anything, but you know, with the new motor, with the bigger battery, I'm assuming it's about maybe 90 to 100 pounds, maybe closer to 100, uh, but it's still lightweight because the frame is aluminum. Now let's take the 72 volt X class out on the streets. We're gonna do our first test ride. Turn it on, turn the bike on. So right now we're at power level one. There's no pedal assist, so it's just power level. Now this bike is pretty high for me. <laughs> All right, so this is power level one. Feels really smooth. Definitely need to upgrade these brakes. That's level one. Let's bump it up to two. You know what, let's do, let's just do level five. Woo! <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> pretty intense. It's a pretty, pretty intense build. Uh, I can't even flat foot it, so um, I'm, I'm literally just in an aggressive cafe racer stance. I don't even think I did full throttle. I think I was maybe just halfway. This basically turns the X-Class into a totally different bike. It's a pretty crazy upgrade. Shout out to E Street Bikes. Shout out to Powerful Lithium. Definitely a kit to purchase if you have an Aerial X-Class. So let's talk about the power. Um, the torque and motor response is obviously regulated by the Sapphaton controller. And it does feel like, you know, a stronger, more powerful response than the stock controller. Obviously, stock controller is 48 volts. This is 72 volts. There's gonna be a noticeable difference. But I do think that the Sab is doing something a little bit extra. A steady torque, it just feels ultra smooth on this controller. You know, as I'm, you know, as I'm twisting the throttle, it's not just jamming volts into the motor. It is delivering a, a more um, sort of, I guess like a smoother ramp of torque, as opposed to, you know, just like a, a really steep curve of torque. And that's, uh, that's pretty cool. That's definitely, a really nice improvement over the stock controller. Now, in terms of comfort, um, you know, this still has the stock tires on it. So, um, it, you know, it's a bit louder. It does feel maybe a little bit softer on the road. So I think probably upgrading these tires to Shinko's or some sort of dual sport moto tires would, would greatly improve the traction and the comfort so I don't know exactly what kind of suspension Aerial Rider uses, but uh, you know, it does have a suspension fork and it does have suspension on the rear. But um, uh, you know, I still feel every bump, uh, but it does absorb a little bit. It feels good, especially on a road like this, where it's just sort of like a you know, one lane, smooth, no traffic, speed limit's 25. This is perfect for that kind of cruising. And look, I'm going up a hill right now and has no trouble whatsoever. So that's, uh, that's definitely a plus. Uh, I, I don't find myself pedaling. <laughs> uh, also, you know, this bike, I have a pretty small inseam. So this bike is, you know, just a little bit taller uh, than the bikes that I'm used to which uh, I usually modify to lower it from my size. It does seem like everyone who is, you know, probably over 5'10", you know, 
between 5'10 and 6'5, uh, this bike felt like, you know, smaller on them as opposed to feeling bigger on me. When we did uh, do this build, we did have to move the seat further back and we actually changed the bars to be more uh, sort of cafe racer style handlebars, which is why I'm like so far forward on the bike, uh, which is fine, especially when, you know, when we're just cruising, but you know, going downhill, it's a little tricky. All right, we're gonna pull over here and we're gonna start our top speed test. Make sure that the road is clear here. Okay, clear. All right, so we'll do our top speed test. We are on level five power. Looks like it's clear up ahead. All right, here we go. Overall, I think uh, this is a really cool kit for your X-Class. Um, it does maybe require a little bit of DIY knowledge, but uh, Sal from E Street Bikes, he has tutorials online. Uh, he's responsive if you reach out to him. Yeah, uh, first impressions is it's perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. It's definitely got a lot of torque, a lot of push and pull. It's pretty much what I was looking for in terms of something that's electric, but also kind of a good commuter vehicle. I love it, makes me feel comfortable. I feel super happy on it. I was really lucky to have my buddy Run Playback help me with the builds. Um, honestly, electronics like this was a huge learning curve for me. I'm not necessarily uh, electronically inclined. Once it came together, it looked pretty easy, I have to say. Um, there's still a couple of things that I'm gonna be working on myself. So wiring the turn signals, doing a little bit more cable management and getting things just kind of lined up and labeled so that I know what they are for the future. But I'd say overall, my experience with modding was good. Um, like I said, it's a learning curve. If you're not already sort of inclined to tinker with electronics or motors and machines, I'm not gonna lie, it's probably gonna be a little bit difficult for you. But there are so many resources online. If you have never ridden a bike that is this powerful, it's a good experience. It just feels good. If you want to feel euphoria when you're riding your e-bike, do this. <laughs> Overall, we're really satisfied with the combination of components on this build, and obviously, it feels like a completely different bike. And while the cost and level of DIY skills may be intimidating for some, there is a really nice sense of accomplishment once you get things working. This kind of build is for those who want to unlock the full potential of their Aerial Rider X-Class. If you have any questions or ways to improve this build, leave them in the comments below. If you want to dive into more video and tech tips, click the links on the side and remember to like and subscribe so we can help you find tech deals that fit your lifestyle. We'll see you guys in the next video.